Having exceptional people skills is a highly valuable asset in today's interconnected world. It goes beyond simply being able to communicate effectively. It involves understanding and connecting with others on a deeper level. Individuals with exceptional people skills have a profound ability to build relationships, inspire trust, and navigate complex social dynamics. These skills are essential in both personal and professional settings and can greatly impact one's success and fulfillment in life. When you are talking to people, pick out the most interesting subject in the world to talk to them about. What is the most interesting subject in the world to them? Themselves. When you talk to them about themselves, they will be deeply interested and also be utterly fascinated. They will think well of you for doing this. When you talk to people about themselves, you are rubbing them the right way. You are working with human nature. When you talk to people about yourself, you are rubbing them the wrong way and working against human nature. Take these four words out of your vocabulary. I, me, my, mine. With these four words, substitute one word, the most powerful word spoken by human tongue, you. This is for you. You will benefit if you do this. This will please your family. You get both advantages, etc. It is hard to do this and it does take practice, but the rewards make it well worth it. Another good way of using people's interest in themselves in conversation is to take them, is to get them talking about themselves. You will find that people would rather talk about themselves than about any other subject. If you will maneuver people into talking about themselves, they will like you very much. This is done by asking them questions about themselves, such as, how is your family, Tim? What is your son in the Navy doing? Where is your daughter living now? How long have you been with the company? Is this your hometown, Mrs. What do you think of? John and Tim, is that a picture of your family? Most of us have not been effective with others because we keep busy thinking and talking about ourselves. The thing to remember is that it is not how you like your remarks and subject. It is how your listeners like them. So when talking to others, talk about them and get them talking about themselves. This is how you can become a more interesting conversationalist. The other key skill is to make people feel important. And the most universal trait of mankind is a trait you and everybody else has. A trait so strong that it makes people do the things that they do, good and bad, is a desire to be important, the desire to be recognized. To be skillful in human relations, be sure to make, make people feel important. Remember that the most important you make people feel, the more they will respond to you. Everybody wants to be treated as somebody. This is the basis for the Asian habit of saving face. Nobody wants to be treated as a nobody, and when they are ignored or talked down to, they are being treated as just that. Keep in mind that to the other person, they are just as important to themselves as you are to yourself. The use of this trait is one of the cornerstones of successful human relations. Here are some tips on how to recognize people and make them feel important. Listen to them. Listening to people is just about the best way to make them feel important. Failure to listen to them makes them feel unimportant. Applaud and compliment them. When they deserve it, it must be sincere. Recognition and appreciation are basic human needs. Use their names as often as possible. Call people by their names and they will like you. It is much better to say good morning John than to say good morning. Pause before you answer them. This gives them the impression that you have thought over what they said and that it was worthy of thinking over. Use the words you and your. Remember, avoid I, me, my, mine. You and your make them the important ones. Acknowledging people who are waiting to see you. If they have to wait, let them know. You know that they are, you, that they are waiting. This is really treating them as somebody. Pay attention to everybody in a group. 
A group is more than one, not just a leader or a spokesperson. In dealing with people, there will be situations where you have to agree with them. Just about the single most important step you can take to be skillful in human relations is for you to master the art of being agreeable. Truly, this is one of the gems of wisdom of our time. Probably nothing will help you so much in your lifetime as this easy to do technique of being agreeable. As long as you live, never forget that any fool can disagree with people. It takes a wise person, a shrewd person, a big person to agree, particularly when the other person is wrong. The art of being agreeable has six parts. Learn to be agreeable, to agree with people. Get yourself into a frame of mind and attitude of being agreeable. Develop an agreeable nature. Be a naturally agreeable person. The second art is to tell people when you agree with them. It is not enough to be agreeable with people. Let people know that you agree with them. Nod your head. Yes. And look at them when you do. And say to them, I agree with you. Or you are right. Do not tell people when you disagree with them unless it is absolutely necessary. The fourth skill here is to admit when you are wrong. Whenever you are wrong, say out loud, I made a mistake, I was wrong. It takes a big person to do this and people admire anyone who can do it. The average person will lie, deny, but the big person will always agree. The fifth skill is to refrain from arguing. The poorest technique known in human relations is arguing. Even if you are right, don't argue. Nobody wins arguments or friends by arguing. Handle fighters properly. Fighters want one thing, a fight. The best technique to handle them is to refuse to fight with them. They will sputter, fume and then look silly. So the three key principles here are that people like those who agree with them. People dislike those who disagree with them. People don't like being disagreed with. Another important skill when you're dealing with people is to develop exceptional listening skills. The more listening you do, the smarter you will become, the better you will be liked, and the better conversationalist you will be. A good listener always winds up far ahead of a good talker in people's affections. This is because a good listener always allows people to hear the favorite speakers themselves. There are a few things in life which will help you more than becoming a good listener. However, being a good listener is not an accident. There are five rules which will make you a good listener. Rule number one, look at the person who is talking. Listen with your eyes as well as your ears. Keep looking as long as they are talking. Anybody worth listening to is worth looking at. Lean toward the speaker and listen intently. Appear as if you don't want to miss a single word. There is a tendency to lean toward the interesting talker and away from the not so interesting ones. Rule number three, ask questions. This lets the person who is talking know you are listening. Asking questions is a high form of flattery. Questions can be as simple as, what happened then? Then what did you do? Stick to the speaker's subject and don't interrupt. This is rule number four. Don't change subjects on a person until they are finished. No matter how anxious you are to get started on a new one. Rule number five, use the speaker's words, you and your. If you use I, me, my, mine, you are switching the focus of the speaker to yourself. This is talking, not listening. The five rules are nothing more than courtesy. Never will courtesy pay off for you so much as it will in listening. As you continue on your journey to learn the tips and tricks of skillfully influencing people, there is another key which is as fundamental as the ability to influence people itself. The first big step to getting people to do what you want them to do is to find out what will make them to do it and what they want. 
when you know what will move them you then know how to move them all of us are different we like different things we place different values on different things don't make the mistake of assuming that other people like what you like or are after what you are after find out what they are after what they like then you can move them by telling them what they want to hear you simply show them how they can get what they want by doing what you want them to do this is a big secret of influencing people it means hitting the target with what you say but naturally you must know where the target is as an example of putting this principle to work let's assume you are an employer and you are trying to get an engineer to come to work for you you know that several other companies have offered this person a position trying this principle find out what people want you would first determine this what in a person and a company the engineer was looking for and what appealed to this person most if you found out that this was an advancement opportunity you would show how much advancement opportunity you had to offer if the candidate was after security you would talk security if further education and experience was important you would talk about that the point is that you would find out what the engineer wanted and then you would show how the candidate would get what he or she were after by doing what you wanted example to come to work for you to make this principle work from the opposite position let's assume you're applying for a job you want very much you would first find out the abilities duties and responsibilities needed so that you could show them that you could fill their needs if they need a person to handle customers over the phone you would mention that you could talk or had handled customers over the phone after you knew what they were looking for you could talk the language they want to hear the method of finding out what people want is used by asking watching and listening to them plus the effort on your part to find out another key skill is to develop the ability to convince people it is human nature for people to be skeptical of you and of what you say when you are saying things that are your own advantage you can eliminate much of this skepticism by going at it in a different way the better way is for you not to make the statement directly but to quote somebody let somebody else make the statement for you even if that somebody else isn't even present if you are asked if the product you sell will last a long time you might answer my next door neighbor has used one for 4 years and it is in good condition in effect your next door neighbor is answering the question for you even though he isn't around if you are applying for a position and the prospective employer wanted if you could do the work you would mention how well pleased your past employers have been etc if you were trying to rent your apartment and the people you were trying to rent to wondered if it was quiet you would mention that the past tenants remarked how quiet the apartment was now in all these examples you do not answer the inquiry or question your next door neighbor your past employers your past tenants do the answering for you the people you are talking to will become most impressed than if you were to answer it's an odd thing but people won't have the slightest doubt that what you tell them indirectly is true yet they will be highly skeptical if you say it yourself so speak through third persons good people relate success stories cite facts and statistics so remember developing exceptional people skills is of utmost importance in today's interconnected and globalized world in almost every aspect of life whether personal or professional the ability to effectively communicate and connect with others is a key determinant of success these skills enable individuals to build strong relationships foster collaboration and navigate various social dynamics with ease